Section 2 of The Works of Edgar Allan Poe, Raven Edition, Volume 4. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Arnie Horton. Lionizing by Edgar Allan Poe. All people went upon their ten toes in wild wonderment bishop hall satires i am that is to say i was a great man but i am neither the author of junius nor the man in the mask for my name i believe is robert jones and i was born somewhere in the city of fum fudge the first action of my life was the taking hold of my nose with both hands my mother saw this and called me a genius my father wept for joy and presented me with a treatise on nosology this i mastered before i was breached i now began to feel my way in the science and soon came to understand that provided a man had a nose sufficiently conspicuous he might by merely following it arrive at a lionship but my attention was not confined to theories alone every morning i gave my proboscis a couple of pulls and swallowed a half dozen of drams when i came of age my father asked me one day if i would step with him into his study my son said he when we were seated what is the chief end of your existence my father i answered it is the study of nosology and what robert he inquired is nosology sir i said it is the science of noses and can you tell me he demanded what is the meaning of a nose a nose my father i replied greatly softened has been variously defined by about a thousand different authors here i pulled out my watch it is now noon or thereabouts we shall have time enough to get through with them all before midnight to commence then the nose according to bartholinus is that protuberance that bump that excrescence that will do robert interrupted the good old gentleman i am thunderstruck at the extent of your information i am positively upon my soul here he closed his eyes and placed his hand upon his heart come here here he took me by the arm your education may now be considered as finished it is high time you should scuffle for yourself and you cannot do a better thing than merely follow your nose so 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 here he kicked me down stairs and out of the door so get out of my house and god bless you as i felt within me the divine afflatus i considered this accident rather fortunate than otherwise i resolved to be guided by the paternal advice i determined to follow my nose i gave it a pull or two upon the spot and wrote a pamphlet on nosology forthwith all fum fudge was in an uproar wonderful genius said the quarterly superb physiologist said the westminster clever fellow said the foreign fine writer said the edinburgh profound thinker said the dublin great man said bentley divine soul said fraser one of us said blackwood who can he be said mrs bass blue what can he be said big miss basbleu where can he be said little miss basbleu but i pay these people no attention whatever i just step into the shop of an artist the duchess of bless my soul was sitting for her portrait the marquis of so-and-so was holding the duchess's poodle the earl of this and that was flirting with her salts and his royal highness of touch me not was leaning upon the back of her chair i approached the artist and turned up my nose oh beautiful sighed her grace 
Oh, my, lisped the Marquis. Oh, shocking, groaned the Earl. Oh, abominable, growled His Royal Highness. What will you take for it? asked the artist. For his nose, shouted Her Grace. A thousand pounds, said I, sitting down. A thousand pounds, inquired the artist, musingly. A thousand pounds, said I. Beautiful, said he, entranced. A thousand pounds, said I. Do you warrant it, he asked, turning the nose to the light. I do, said I, blowing it well. It is quite original, he inquired, touching it with reverence. Humph, said I, twisting it to one side. Has no copy been taken, he demanded, surveying it through a microscope. None, said I, turning it up. Admirable, he ejaculated, thrown quite off his guard by the beauty of the maneuver. A thousand pounds, said I. A thousand pounds, said he. Precisely, said I. A thousand pounds, said he. Just so, said I. You shall have them, said he. What a piece of virtue. So he drew me a check upon the spot and took a sketch of my nose. I engaged rooms in Germain Street and sent Her Majesty the 99th edition of the Nosology with a portrait of the proboscis. That sad little rake, the Prince of Wales, invited me to dinner. We were all lions and recherches. There was a modern Platonist. He quoted Porphyry, Iamblichus, Plotinus, Proclus, Hierocles, Maximus Tyrius, and Syrianus. There was a human perfectibility man. He quoted Turgot, Price, Priestley, Condorcet, De Stael, and the ambitious student in ill health. There was Sir Positive Paradox. He observed that all fools were philosophers and that all philosophers were fools. There was aestheticus ethics. He spoke of fire, unity, and atoms, bipart and pre-existent soul, affinity and discord, primitive intelligence, and homomeria. There was theologus theology. He talked of Isubius and Arrhenius, heresy in the Council of Nice, Huseism and consubstantialism, homoseus and homoeosios there was fricassee from the rocher de cancale he mentioned meriton of red tongue cauliflowers with velote sauce veal a la saint menehold marinade a la saint florentine and orange jellies and mosaiques there was bibulous o bumper he touched upon Lator and Mark Brunen, upon Mousseau and Chabertin, upon Richborg and St. George, upon Haubrion, Leonville and Medoc, upon Barak and Pregnac, upon Grave, upon Saturn, upon Lafitte, and upon St. Perret. He shook his head at Clos de Vogot and told with his eyes shut the difference between Sherry and Amontillado. There was Signor Tinton Tintino from Florence. He discoursed of Ciampue, Arpino, Carpaccio, and Argostino, of the gloom of Caravaggio, of the amenity of Albano of the colors of titian of the frows of rubens and of the waggeries of john steen there was the president of the fum fudge university he was of opinion that the moon was called bendis in thrace bubastis in egypt dion in rome and artemis in greece there was a grand turk from stambul he could not help thinking that the angels were horses, cocks, and bulls. 
that somebody in the sixth heaven had seventy thousand heads and that the earth was supported by a sky-blue cow with an incalculable number of green horns there was delphinus polyglot he told us what had become of the eighty-three lost tragedies of Isaeus, of the fifty-four orations of Isaeus, of the three hundred and ninety-one speeches of Lysias, of the hundred and eighty treaties of Theophrastus, of the eighth book of the conic sections of Apollonius, of Pindar's hymns and dithyrambics and of the five and forty tragedies of homer jr there was ferdinand fitz fossilus feldspar he informed us all about internal fires and tertiary formations about aeriforms fluidiforms and solidiforms about quartz and marl about schist and shoral about gypsum and trap about talc and calc about blend and horn blend about mica slate and pudding stone about cyanite and lepidolite about hematite and tremolite about antimony and chalcedony about manganese and whatever you please there was myself i spoke of myself of myself of myself of myself of nosology of my pamphlet and of myself i turned up my nose and i spoke of myself marvelous clever man said the prince superb said his guests and next morning her grace of bless my soul paid me a visit will you go to almax pretty creature said she tapping me under the chin upon honor said i nose and all she asked as i live i replied here then is a card my life shall i say you will be there dear duchess with all my heart pshaw no but with all your nose every bit of it my love said i so i gave it a twist or two and found myself at almax the rooms were crowded to suffocation he is coming said somebody on the staircase he is coming said somebody farther up he is coming said somebody farther still he is come exclaimed the duchess he is come the little love and seizing me firmly by both hands she kissed me thrice upon the nose a marked sensation immediately ensued diavolo cried count capricornuti dios guarda muttered don stiletto mille toneres ejaculated the prince de granoil to sand tufel growled the elector of bludenhoff it was not to be borne i grew angry i turned short upon bludenhoff sir said i to him you are a baboon sir he replied after a pause donner and blitzen this was all that could be desired we exchanged cards at chalk farm the next morning I shot off his nose and then called upon my friends. Bete, said the first. Fool, said the second. Dolt, said the third. Ass, said the fourth. Ninny, said the fifth. Noodle, said the sixth. Be off, said the seventh. At all this I felt mortified and so called upon my father. Father, I asked, what is the chief end of my existence? my son he replied it is still the study of nosology but in hitting the elector upon the nose you have overshot your mark you have a fine nose it is true but then bludenhoff has none you are damned and he has become the hero of the day i grant you that in fum fudge the greatness of a lion is in proportion to the size of his proboscis but good heavens there is no competing with a lion who has no proboscis at all. End of section 2